Say what? The USC is in the Big Ten? Now, I'm a Big Ten fan. I'm excited. It certainly changes the nature of college football now with what the SEC and, and Big Ten have done. But uh, uh, I'm excited to see how this pans out. Team number 22, the USC Trojans. I am Ralph Michaels. This is the Gold Sheet Top 25. It is July 24th as we record our number 22 team, the Trojans. Let's look at their odds for this year. These are as of today from DraftKings. National Championship 65 to 1. Conference Championship 22 to 1. To make the college football playoffs, yes is plus 400, no minus 600. Their season win total stands at 7. You'll see why when you look at their schedule. Overs minus 125, under plus 105. They do not have a odds to go undefeated. And Miller Moss, their Heisman, top Heisman candidate at 40 to 1. Guys, before we take a look at USC's season last year, I want to bring something out when you're shopping from futures. If you watched my previous video, our number 121 team, Arizona, you will note that we went through the odds. Arizona was 10 to 1 to win the Big Ten. And they were 150 to 1 to win the national championship. That is a 15 to 1 difference to win the playoff games. But USC is 22 to 1 to win the Big Ten and only 65 to 1 to win the national championship. So while Arizona has a 15 to 1 gap between the conference title and the national championship, USC has a three to one gap. So if you're looking to bet Arizona, I would bet them to win the national championship at plus 150 to one, and you could hedge out. But if you're betting USC, I think there's much better value betting them to win the Big Ten at plus 220. You know, or having a shot to get to the Big Ten, at least split some of that. So make sure when you look at your futures, you're breaking out what is the best scenario and the best value with the team you're and what you're trying to accomplish at the end of the year. We look back at their season last year. Remember, they had the Heisman winner returning. Everyone thought he was going to go to the NFL. He comes back. Many picked USC to win the Pac-12. Well, very disappointing. They go eight and five, four and nine against the spread and 10 and three over under. You'll see why they went 10 and three over under in just a minute. Their yards per game diff last year, number 20. They were plus 1.29 yards per play. Their yards per game and points per game rankings on offense, 10 for yards per game, three for points per game. On defense, number 119, and number 121. We did LSU a while back. If you thought their split was crazy, think about that. Points per game, they were number three on offense and number 121 on defense. I'm surprised they didn't go 13-0 and over under this year. They played the number nine toughest schedule last year. And when you look at the efficiency ranks, they were number three and number 72. They played four close games and they won three of them. Imagine had they lost a couple of those close games, they would have been around 500 for the year. At Colorado, they led 21 to nothing, and they led by 20 points at halftime. Colorado scored three TDs, the last one with 138 left, but they couldn't get the ball back. USC wins that. Arizona, I just talked about it in the last video. Three OTs, they convert on the two-pointer to win. Utah, USC trailed by 14 late third quarter. USC took the lead with 146 left, but they missed the two-point conversion and lose by two. Excuse me, they missed the two-point conversion, and then Utah kicked the 38-yard field goal to win by two in that situation. So USC could have tied the game but they went for two, and then Utah does win the game by two points. Against Cal, USC was down 28-17 at halftime. 
They were down 14 points early in the fourth quarter. They score three touchdowns late. Cal comes back, scores a touchdown with 58 seconds to go. Cal was down one point after that touchdown. They decide to go for the win instead of the tie. They don't complete it, and they ended up losing by one point. So, again, that 8-5 and five record is actually a little bit on the generous side when you look at their close wins and close losses. Guys, I've enjoyed doing these videos. We've added some features from what people put into the comments section. Please take one minute out of your busy day. Please do give us a comment. Would you like anything added? Do you agree with the USC assessment? Where do you think they'll finish in the Big Ten? Also, we appreciate each and every like that you give us. If you touch that like button or smash that like button, that's up to you. But again, it allows us to continue to do all this free betting data from all the great wager talk handicappers throughout the year. You are the reason we do these videos. And finally, Gold Sheet, the finest football newsletter. This is Gold Sheet's top 25 as we've gone through the summer. This is just a tip of the iceberg of what Gold Sheet has already done to prep for this football season. You can get the weekly football newsletter and save $30 with the code GS30. Head to goldsheet.com or to wagertalk.com. Again, the Gold Sheet newsletter, save $30 with the code GS30. Taking a look at the new Big Ten team for 2024. If we look at the Big Ten conference cheat sheet, we'll see they return only 11 starters. They are number 77 as far as Connolly's returning productions. We saw how bad their defense was last year, so it's no surprise they have a new D.C. And they're recruiting number 20 in the country. They were number five in the Big Ten. They returned 11 starters. That is a negative. The last three years, USC has returned 17, 13, and 16. So they're well below the three-year average that they're accustomed to bringing back. They lost more in the draft than they're accustomed to as well. They lost seven players for 20 points, including the number one pick and a Heisman winner. In 2023, they lost four players for 16 points. And in 2022, they lost three players for 14 points. They did bring in 17 transfers. It's the fifth most talented group of transfers in the Big Ten this year. Let's start off with the D.C. Again, when you are number 121, or I think that was the number in defense, you know you need some help. Well, they went out and they got DeAnton Lynn. DeAnton Lynn is the son of the former Charger head coach. He had been in the NFL since 2015. Last year was his first year as a college coach. He went to UCLA as the defensive coordinator, and he shaved 100 yards per game off of what US, UCLA did in 2022. And last year, UCLA was number seven in the country, holding their opponents to 85 yards per game under what they've averaged in those other games. So if Lynn can turn this USC defense around like he did with the Bruins last year, they can become a Big Ten contender. Again, your quarterback, you know what the losses are. They likely are going to go with Moss. Moss got the start in the bowl, threw for 350-plus yards and six touchdowns. And they also have last year's UNLV starter, Maeva, in as a backup. So, again, a young kid and UNLV starter from last year, the top two QBs. The running backs, they lost the top two, including a number three a third-round draft choice who will be playing for Green Bay. Their receivers, they lose two of their top, they lose their top two and four of their top six, including two more NFL draft choices. The O-line lost three starters, only two back. So again, the offense has some work to do. The defense, with their new D.C., they return their top two tacklers and six of their top eight. The D-line, 
lost one NFL draft choice, and four players that combined for 15 starts. Remember, you played 13 games. So four players that made 15 starts, we'll call it you lost two defensive linemen starters. The linebacker only lost two players that made 10 starts. So again, the core of the linebackers are back, and that's why you have six of your top eight tacklers returning. The DBs, they lost their top four. They do return one DB that had some starting experience, and one of those DBs they lost was an NFL draft choice. So you look at the team, they do have some holes to plug, and again, that's why we have them down here as our number 22 team. The 2024 USC schedule is the second toughest schedule in the country. FYI, the Florida Gators have our toughest schedule. As we look at their schedule, what makes their schedule so tough? Well, let's see. You are playing nine Big Ten games. Your three non-conference games are LSU where you're gonna be a dog, Notre Dame where you're likely gonna be a dog, and Utah State. Have them a double-digit favorite in three games, a double-digit dog in one game. You'll see that the gray boxes are those lines between the eights, and you see a red number at Michigan. When you are plus nine or more, that is the red number when they play the Wolverines on the road. As a favorite up to minus eight, four games, minus three, minus six, minus seven, and minus eight. As a dog, the plus eight, four games, plus two, plus four, plus six, and plus seven. Every opponent USC is playing this year, with the exception of Nebraska, made it to a bowl game last year. So they're playing 11 bowl games. Look at this stretch in the middle, guys, from September 21st to November the 2nd. At Michigan, back home to L.A., Fly to Minnesota, back to L.A., fly to Maryland, back to L.A., fly to Washington with five of those games in that between the eight mark. That is going to make or break this UFC team. If they're playing well after the Michigan game, perhaps they get some momentum. If they get destroyed against LSU early and destroyed against Michigan, that's the type of stretch in the schedule where you can see the Trojans fading down the stretch. So keep an eye. We'll see what happens. Before the buys, they get a buy going to Michigan. It really doesn't help. Michigan is off Arkansas State at home. Against Nebraska, they have a buy, but Nebraska also has a buy, so that negates it. Teams, teams that USC faces that have a buy prior to hosting or playing USC, Nebraska is the only team. Uh, besides Nebraska, who we mentioned, of course, Wisconsin on September 28th has a bye. So USC will be going to at Michigan when they come home to face Wisconsin. Wisconsin travels out west with an off week. And I do want to mention now a bad spot. I think they're in a bad scheduling spot against Maryland. You look at the Maryland game on October 19th when they travel to Maryland. USC will be playing their fifth straight game. Their third away game in five weeks. And Maryland, while they're not off a bye, Maryland will be off a bye. And then hosting Northwestern as about a seven-point favorite. So I have a spot circled there where I do think the Maryland Terrapins are in a good situation. Check out the early bird specials, guys. Gold Sheets, LTS plays, their client late phone client plays, or my plays, both available at Wager Talk. The college football and NFL early bird 777 for me. And guess what, guys? If you get a Gold Sheets homepage at Wager Talk and you're interested in buying Gold Sheet for the year for 777, you will get the football newsletter for free. Check them out on wagertalk.com. Well, in the better's edge, Lincoln Riley is third year here. He, of course, was at Oklahoma previous. Here, he's gone 18 and eight straight up, but he's gone 11 and 15 against the spread and 20 overs and six unders 
So at USC, Lincoln Riley, 77% to the over. He's 2-7 and seven against the spread here as a favorite of eight, minus 8 or more. Again, when you have a defense as bad as you have, there's a lot of backdoor scoring. So again, as a favorite of over a touchdown, he is only 2-7. and seven. And when you look at Riley going back, including some Oklahoma days, as a favorite of 14 or more, he's 20 and 26 against the spread, six games under 500. But how about this over under and under? When he's a big favorite, he has gone 31 and 13 over under. That is 71% to the over. Now, when I go back and give you a best bet to finish off this segment and thinners off better's edge, I'm going to go back to look at the schedule and pull out the Penn State game. USC goes at Michigan, host Wisconsin, at Minnesota, host Penn State. On the schedule, you saw seven there. That means based on the gold sheet power ratings, we make Penn State a seven-point favorite. Looking at the current DraftKings lines as of this morning, Penn State is only minus four. So we're getting three points of value and a good scheduling spot. USC in that stretch of their tough schedule, Penn State opens the season at West Virginia. So I don't like playing a big road favorite if it's their first road game of the season. But since they start the season going to West Virginia, they will have gone on the road. They will have faced a very hostile and loud environment and gotten that road jitters out of their way. And when you look at what Penn State has prior, they're going to be a 35-point favorite against BG. They're going to have a bye week. They're going to be a 50-point favorite against Kent State, a 26-point favorite at home against Illinois, a 20-point favorite against UCLA, and then they go to USC with a buy on deck. So I will end this USC video by saying, take a look at Penn State. Grab them minus four now against the USC Trojans. Thank you for watching the gold sheet. Number 22 to USC. And subscribe to Wager Talk TV. You'll get notified when we load our next video. And if you missed any of the top 21 teams, check back through the playlist as you will be prepared for the 2024 college football season.